Okay, so can you still solve basic math word problems? Well, I think most of you can actually figure this problem out. And feel free to use a calculator if you feel like it's necessary. But uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the question. Uh, it says a cup is 7 twelfths full. What percent of the cup is empty? Okay, so this is the problem. Again, feel free to use a calculator. But if you could figure this out, Go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then I'm actually gonna show you two approaches. There's probably even uh, more approaches, but I'm gonna show you the two uh, most common approaches, at least in my opinion, uh, that one could take to solve this problem. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades, and it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if it just entertains you to some degree, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so pretty straightforward problem. And again, we wanna make sure we understand the question. The question is what percent of this cup is empty? Okay, and of course we'll talk more about the question here in a second, but let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. The answer is approximately 41.7%. Okay, so how'd you do? Well, hopefully you got this right, and if that's the case, we must celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face, an A plus, a 100%, and multiple stars, so you can brag to your friends and family that indeed you are a certified professional expert in the area of solving basic math problems, and they'll say to you, well, how would you do in a calculus course or advanced math? You'll say, no problem, uh, I can handle that as well. But anyways, even if you didn't get this right, no big deal, we're gonna uh, review exactly how to do this. But this particular problem, I think is uh, pretty practical in terms of uh, uh, math that everyone should know, okay? So one of the things that you hear um, over and over again, I'm sure I said it, as a teacher as well, is why do we have to learn math? We you know, like, I don't need this algebra stuff or whatever the case is. Well, you know, I guess one could make an argument there. Of course, I'm a, a proponent that, you know, the more math you know, the better. But what we're dealing with here is like practical mathematics, okay? We're dealing with fractions and percent. And this is stuff that everyone should know, but let's go ahead and get into the solution. So the first thing you want to do uh, when you have any uh, math word problem, okay, is make sure you read it more than just once, right? I like to use the rule of three. So read the problem and read it again and then really make sure you understand the question because here, uh, you know, we're dealing with a cup, obviously, right, like a cup of water. And uh, we're given that this cup is seven twelfths full. And then we're asked, so this is a fraction, then we're asked what percent. So now we got to involve percent. Uh, of this cup is empty. So we're saying, okay, this is how much it's full, what percent is empty. So there's a, uh, multiple things going on here. And if you just read the problem one time and just start doing stuff, it's not gonna be clear. Okay, so when you do any problem, you need to reference the problem over and over again just to make sure you're answering the right question. Okay, so uh, one of the best things you can do after reading a math word problem is to model the problem. Try to visualize the problem in here the best way to visualize what's going on here is simply just come up with a quick little sketch. So here is my lovely little sketch of a cup of water. Well, I'm using water, it could be anything you want, but here is a cup and I'm uh, kind of represented seven twelfths here. Now, if you're going to come up with a, a sketch, you wanna to try to make your sketch or your drawing, your model, you know, someone as accurate as possible. You don't have to be a perfect artist. Don't waste too much time to make the perfect, perfect drawing or whatnot, but if you look here, uh, here's my cup, it's 7 twelfths full, right? So you can see I have some water or something in here. And 7 twelfths is close to what? Well, hopefully some of you can recognize, well, seven is maybe close to six. So six over 12 is one half, like 50%, right? So most of us hopefully would be thinking, all right, now 50%. So you wanna have your sketch or drawing somewhat, uh, you know, re reasonably accurate, right? So here are kind of, made uh, little um, marks here that represent uh, twelfths of this cup. You don't have to do that, but you know, you should have a, a drawing that, um, you know, represents that. In other words, you wouldn't want to have your cup like this and then be like, okay, here is seven twelfths, whatnot. 
that can uh, potentially confuse some of you out there, okay? All right, now another reason why you want to do this is because when you get uh, you know, your answer, you can kind of uh, use some common sense to see if, in fact, you think it is right. Okay, so here is the model, right? We have this cup, it's uh, 7 12 full, but what is the question? Okay, well, the question we have to go back, right, is what percent of the cup is empty? So I need to determine what percent of this part right here, okay, this is the question, what percent of this stuff right there, because this is the empty part of the cup, and we want to express that in percent form. Okay, so there's a couple different approaches you could take, and uh, there's probably even more than that, but let me uh, go ahead and tell you what I think is probably the most common approach. All right, so our common approach is. So let's go to take a look at the first thing here. So one concept about percent that you should understand that percent, uh, you want to think of it in terms, well, there's a couple different ways you can think about percent, but a good model for percent is a part out of a whole, okay? So for example, let's say here is an apple or a pizza and I cut it in, in force, okay? And I just have one slice there and I, you know, say, okay, give me this one slice. How much of the, uh, what percent of the pizza uh, would someone get? Where well, they would get one part out of the whole and there is four in uh, total, okay? Or the part out of the total, part out of the whole. So one fourth, okay, would be a representation of this, but percent, we like to represent obviously using this symbol here, the percent symbol. So we're going to have to be able to convert fractions, okay, for example, one fourth to decimals, okay, one fourth is the same thing as a decimal 0.25, and this is the same thing as the percent 25%. So this concept of percent could be, you know, you could think of the part out of the whole in terms of fraction, decimals, but when the question, um, you know, explicitly says, hey, what percent, you know, of something, then you're going to have to express your answer in terms of percent, okay? So I could say, well, one-fourth of the pizza is gone, but no, I need to say 25% of the pizza is gone. Okay, now, why do I bring that up? Well, uh, here, if I know the seven-twelfths of this uh, cup is full, we might want to consider, hey, let's just get this in percent value right here. How much of the, what percent of the cup is full? Okay, so what we could do is take that 7 over 12, and in our calculator, just take 7 divided by 12. You're going to get uh, 0.583, and I'm just kind of rounding off here. So this is a decimal, okay? Now, how do I go from a decimal to a percent? Pretty easy. All you have to do is multiply by 100 or move the decimal point over two places to the right, so our uh, cup here is about approximately 58.3% full. Now, again, there's different approaches to answering this question, but this would be you know, a pretty easy question to answer if I said, hey, the cup is 58.3% uh, uh, full. How, you know, what percent of the cup is empty? Because hopefully a lot of you uh, will say, oh, that's pretty easy. Uh, to get that answer, all I have to do is subtract 58.3% from 100, right? Because the entire cup here is 100%. And if it's 58.3% uh, full, okay, if I subtract that out, that means it is, uh, the difference there is 41.7% empty, okay? All right, so this is one approach. Uh, not the only approach, but this is probably, um, yeah, maybe in my opinion, the easiest approach to do this problem. Okay, but let's go ahead and take a look at a second approach. But before we do that, I would like you to take a look at this, which is uh, a nice, gentle invitation to please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And I say please because I really am trying to reach as many people as possible that are either, one, interested in math, uh, or maybe want to relearn math, um, but especially those people that struggle in math, okay? It's, uh, it really takes a toll on people when they're frustrated in mathematics. As a matter of fact, I've seen this over and over uh, through the years where people just give up on math way too early, and it can have serious major uh, consequences, especially uh, for people who said, you know what, I really wanted to be an engineer way back in the day when I was young, but you know, someone told me I was bad at math, or I thought I was bad at math, so I just never tried. I hear that over and over and over again, okay? So really am trying to help those people, uh, and of course, you know, teach math in an easy to understand way. That's my objective. So thank you so much. Make sure to hit that uh, notification button, and this does, again, really does help uh, the algorithm 
reach more people. Okay, back to the problem. So I showed you one way. Now, another approach to do this is to kind of work in fractions, right? So if 7 twelfths of the cup here is full, well, we might want to um, think about uh, in terms of fractions, you know, what, um, what fraction of the cup here is empty, okay? So we know 7 twelfths is full, okay? So what, what uh, fraction would represent how much is empty? Well, the cup, if this is 7 twelfths, okay, the entire cup, it being full, is 1. Now, some of you might be uh, thinking, well, can we just express that as 12 twelfths? Yes, right, because if this is 6 twelfths right here, this is 7 twelfths, this is 8 twelfths, 9 twelfths, 10 twelfths, 11 twelfths, we're almost there, right? We're almost full right here. We're full 12 over 12, 12 twelfths, which, of course, is 1, okay? So if we subtract away... Uh, 7 twelfths from 1, okay, or 12 twelfths, we'll be able to um, figure out what fraction expresses uh, how much of this cup is empty. All right, so let's go ahead and do this lovely uh, fraction math right now. So 1 minus 7 twelfths. Now, again, this one here, uh, we want to think of this um, in terms of a common denominator. Yeah, we're talking about adding and subtracting fractions, specifically subtracting fractions. By the way, let me just mention, if you are like, boy, I'm rusty on my basic math, and you want to relearn basic math skills, which I think is important for all sorts of uh, practical value, uh, check out my Math Foundations mini course. It's a little math boot camp. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. It'll really, really help you out with all the basics like percent, order of operations, fractions, etc. Okay, so 1 I can express as 12 over 12, right? Because 12 over 12 is 1. And of course, now I have common denominators. You can't add or subtract fractions unless the bottom numbers are the same. And once you have the bottom numbers the same, i.e. a common denominator, all we need to do is subtract the uh, respective numerators. So this would be 12 minus 7, which of course is 5. So 5 twelfths of the cup is empty. But remember, the question is asking what percent of the cup is empty. So we're going to have to convert 5 twelfths into uh, a percentage. So what you want to do is get your calculator out and uh, turn that into a decimal. So you're going to get 0.416 repeating. These sixes just continue on. So, uh, so this little bar here means that the six continues. This is a repeating digit. Okay. So that's 0.416 repeating. And now I can just move that decimal point two places to the right or by multiplying by 100. So our answer is 41.6 uh, repeating. But you could round up all these uh, sixes here that just continue going on and on and on. We'll just round that up to seven. And so our answer is effectively the same, approximately 41.7% empty. All right, now there are probably other approaches to figure this out. And, uh, you know, if you're able to answer the question, you know, uh, you know, correctly and you understood what you were doing and you could tell your math story to someone else and it was a different approach than what I just did here, then that's perfectly fine. OK, as long as you can answer a question uh, in mathematics with logic and you can kind of uh, uh, clearly communicate what you're doing. That's what counts. And that's what I love about mathematics is that, you know, there is uh, a good element of creativity. Right? A lot of people think math is, you know, it's just very discreet. It's just, you know, this or that. It's got to be this way or that way. Uh, not at all, you know, especially these uh, math word problems. So, again, you know, if you are wanting to kind of, um, you know, learn math and you don't have the pressure of being in a class, for example, just kind of have fun with it, you know, toy around with it and see if you can come up with creative ways that's uh, good for your critical thinking. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.